Hey, and we're live. Good morning, everybody. Well, good afternoon from Vienna. Good evening. I hope you're not tuning in too late. Ah, hope everybody is. Ha Hello, my JS world. Ah, good to see everybody. Hope everybody's having a wonderful day. Hello from Earth. Yes, hello from Earth here as well. <laughs> Team Pat Pat. Hello. I love that nickname. <laughs> That's very sweet. Hello from a hot Cape Town. Oh, my goodness. It's I'm a little bit jealous. It's quite chilly here. <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. The land of Mardi Gras and jazz. Hello, Norman. Good to see everybody. Um, hello, <laughs> JS Hive Mine. Hello. Hello, Josh. Great to see everybody. Ah, so hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody was able to rest this weekend. I was able to relax. Hi from Chile. Hello. Good. Ah, 30 degrees. My goodness. Hello from Kazakhstan. Hey there. Cool. Well, hello from the Philippines. Hey, Jason. Good to see you. And from S ah, Sydney from Lagos. Hey, oh, good to see everyone. All right. Well, let's get right in and do some JavaScript today. We've got two more weeks of this boot camp. Incredible how much we've gotten, gotten done so far. And uh, yeah, let's do some JavaScript. Let me, um, oh yes, if you're tuning in for the first time, hello, my name's Ramon. Uh, we're doing a free JavaScript bootcamp where you can join in and all of the videos are up on classcentral.com. You can sign in, sign up there. If you're joining in late and you're thinking, oh, do I have to catch up? Don't stress. We want to do more of these. So maybe later in the year, you'll get another, another one for these. And yeah, um, so excited to see everybody and getting right into it. Before we begin, I just want to give a quick heads up. Um, instead of doing a Q&A, I'm actually going to cut this lesson just ever so slightly short. So we're going to end five minutes early because right after this, at the top of the hour, we're going to have a guest session. Um, we're going to have Stuart Langridge on, yes, uh, to give a session called You Really Don't Need All of That JavaScript, I Promise, which sounds a little bit counterintuitive to what we're doing, isn't it? But I promise you, as we get in further in our JavaScript development journeys, as we get into doing a little bit of front end while we're learning JavaScript, it's going to be ever so important to understand, just like any tool, where to apply JavaScript and where not. So I highly recommend sticking around for that. Um, Quick note, however, the YouTube link will be different. So when, when this lesson ends five minutes early, I'm going to, there we go. There's going to be a YouTube link. We'll also post it in the chat. Ah, we already posted it in the chat. Thank you very much, Mervin. <laughs> um, uh, when, when it ends, I'll let everybody know and we'll hop over there. If you're watching on Twitch, don't worry. Nothing, we'll, we'll stay here in the same Twitch channel. So cool. Let's... Uh, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit. Hey, hey, hello. Hello from Bali. Oh, I love to see everybody here. So, hey. Ah, from Kosovo. Hey. All right. Let's um, get into what we're doing today. Today, we're going to be doing basic algorithm scripting. Tomorrow, we're going to have a lesson on object-oriented programming. And on Thursday, we're going to have two things. We're going to have a guest session from Felina where we're going to do uh, how to read code. And later on in the day, we're going to do the number, the telephone number validator project, which is going to be super exciting and fun. Ah. <laughs> so let's dive right into algorithm scripting. Now, in this session, we're going to be doing a lot of how to apply the concepts that we've been learning over the last three weeks. So we're going to be doing um, <laughs> lunatic very correctly says it's a bit contradictory, contradictory. Yes, but trust me, like any tool, it can be applied somewhere and it can also not have to be applied elsewhere. And it's a good tool to have knowing when to apply that JavaScript. So anyway, let's do some basic algorithm scripting. So I said, we're going to be applying so many of the concepts that we've already learned and unlock a little bit. We've been doing a little of this in the projects. We're going to unlock how to apply these concepts in, let's say, more real life situations such as, and let's hop right in, converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. So we did a little bit of that, a little bit of this during, I believe, the ES6 module. <laughs> I love what Florence says. It's like a hint. You don't really need all that JavaScript, I promise. And absolutely, <laughs> promises are a concept from JavaScript ES6. Yeah, so what have we got here? We're going to have a function here that takes uh, a temperature in Celsius, converts it to Fahrenheit and returns that value in Fahrenheit. Now, if we see here, the algorithm to convert Celsius to Fahrenheit is the temperature in Celsius times 9 divided by 5 
plus 32. Now, as always, you all know me. I love to console log. So let's console log this so far. Console log number 10. F, and we're going to pass in 30 degrees Celsius. So we're going to convert that to Fahrenheit. Now, right now, well, that's giving us undefined. Let's find out why. See, in line two, we're defining it, we're declaring a variable called Fahrenheit, but not giving it a value. And then we're returning that undefined variable. So we're, we're going to assign the value here with the assign operator of Celsius. I could spell Celsius. There we go. Time. Nine divided by five, so times we remember is with the star nine forward slash five to do the division plus 32. So we can see convert to F 30 is 86 degrees. Johannes, didn't you say that you had 30 degrees? I believe so. Yes, 30 degrees. So in Fahrenheit, that would be 86 degrees, which sounds like a lot. <laughs> Perfect. Let's, let's, let's try another one just for fun. Let's say over here in Vienna, it's currently 6 degrees, which in Fahrenheit is 42.8, which uh, is pretty cold. I mean, it's not super cold, but it's cold. Yeah. Well, hey, did we already do this? Let's have a look. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat, pat. Pat ourselves on the back, and let's go on to the next challenge. So we're going to go through many of these as we can today. I said the rest will be homework. I'll repeat that at the end of the session as well. Oh, my goodness. Paula Reyes 13 says it's minus 5 degrees here. My goodness. That is very cold. <laughs> so our next exercise is to reverse a string. We also did this in the palindrome. Let's do that as well. So... Coupled ways to do this. I'm going to go through a couple of ways that we can do this. Let's do it applying a for loop, a classic for loop. We need a result string. First of all, let result is equals to an empty string. Now, the way that I'm going to do this is I'm going to loop through the string backwards so that I can add onto the string those characters. You'll see what I mean. So for let i is equals to 0, i needs to be, oh, not to 0, sorry, string.length minus one. So we start at the last index of that array. I'm going to move my windows because I want to be able to see what everybody is saying in the chat. So, oh, Jason says, is there no operator precedence in JavaScript? There is. And to, um, to clarify, uh, this is going like, hey, what about if I type in, uh, sorry, I'm going to sidetrack ever so slightly. Let's Refer to what you're talking about, console.log 9 divided by 5 plus 32. You're wondering why, why do we not need to, for example, put brackets around this so that we don't accidentally add 32 to 5 and then, div and then divide 9 by 37. The precedence goes that uh, divider goes first and then the addition. Um, you can find out more on MDN, I believe. Uh, just going to put a link to that, that little notice here. I highly recommend checking it out. If you, I think precedence should do it. Operator precedence uh, is a good search to look up. But thank you for asking that. So, yes, let's do our backwards loop. So where i needs to be bigger than or equals to zero, and i will go down every step of the loop. So, um... We will result plus equals um, the character that's at that index. So that's str_i, and instead of returning str, because let me just uh, console log this. So instead of logging stir, because that's just gonna if we just return stir, that's just gonna give us hello again, which we see here. But we actually want to return that result. So let's do that. Olé. <laughs> so this is one way to do it. And Ravi's saying, oh, got a couple of people here. Split, reverse, join. Gulnar is also asking, string, split, reverse, join. Let's, let's do a couple of these types of ways of doing it. Bear with me. Last week, we discovered a new way to iterate, to iterate through an array or a string, which is using a for of loop. So instead of using i and indexes, what we could do is let 
char of stir. So instead of having to do stir i, we can just use char and say like, hey, every loop, every step through the loop, let's just put that character into the, into the variable char. Let's console log that just to see what it looks like. And I'll remove this just for now. You can see hello, which is good. Now, we want to add it to the result like before. However, now let me just remove this console log. We're returning hello because we're adding result plus is equals to result plus char. But what we actually want is result is equals to char plus result. That way it adds the character first and then the result and then the rest of the result. So that way we get our ole like before. So that's one way to do it. But let's look at the way folks have been suggesting in the chat. Let's try that. So instead of using a loop, let's use our built-in string and array um, methods. So string split, what does that give us? That gives us an array made up of each character. We're splitting it along each character, which is good. But then we want to reverse it. We can use the array reverse method. Now it's giving us ole, but it's still not a string. So the last part is going to be to join that. So split, turn into array, reverse array, turn array back into a string. You can find these methods in MDN. I will put just highlight this link here. Ta-da. <laughs> so cool. String, and that's kind of elegant, isn't it? Does it work with anything? Let's try hello JavaScripters. Not going to read that out, but there we go. Ole. <laughs> cool. So let's try that out. Run our tests. And there we go. Pat, pat. Cool. So since we won't, we won't be able to do an extended Q&A for the lesson itself, feel free to ask questions, and I'll try my best to stay on time and topic. Ah. OK. So I hope everybody's staying hydrated, by the way, especially if you're talking a lot like I am. <laughs> so next up is factorialization. Uh, Carlos says, at that point, we didn't see those methods, I think. So we saw them by do during the lessons of the bootcamp. I believe we, we learned about them during the palindrome project session. So yes, um, absolutely try out all three ways. Thank you very much for pointing that out, Carlos. Cool, so next is factorialization. So let's see what it looks like. Factorials are often represented with the shorthand notation n and an exclamation mark. For example, five factorial is one times two times three times four times five, which is good. It's also the same, by the way, as five times four times three times two times one. As, uh, as uh, folks in the chat were saying before, the precedence doesn't matter here. So. How can we factorialize this? We want to go through, we, we can do a loop, for example. So let's try a loop first. So four, and again, uh, we'll do let i is equals to zero. i is smaller than num. It's smaller than or equals to num. And i goes up by one each step through the loop. Have a result. We want to start at 1, because remember, we want to multiply by 1 at first. So num times equals, oh, sorry, uh, result, sorry, <laughs> result times equals uh, i. So that way, it'll go through each of them and multiply them accordingly. Return result. Let's console log that. See how it looks. So factorialize 5 should give us 120, but we see here it's giving us 0. And that's because of a mistake that I made. You see, we start the loop at 0. So we don't want to do that. What we actually want to do is start at 1. So then we go 1 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5. And that gives us our factorial result, which is 120. As Johannes very correctly says, ta-da, I should start at 1. Thank you very much. 
Gunnar very correctly says, shouldn't we start from two? And you totally can. However, that would probably break it if we do factorialize one, wouldn't it? If we do I starts at two, ah, never mind. Ah, yeah, because I needs to be smaller than or equals to num. So you're right. That totally works. Well spotted, Gunnar. Yeah, two times three, one times two times three is six. 24, let's run our tests. We're going to try out another method, but let's run our tests. Looks good. Um, preliminary pat pat. Um, but folks have been saying recursion. And yeah, let's do recursion. Recursion is fun. And I love doing recursion with factorialization because I, it's, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite examples for it. So first we need a base case. Now, before we do the base case, let's return factorialization. So we want to return num times factorialize num minus one. So we'll go five times factorialize of four, which is four times factorialize of three, of two, and of one, of zero, of negative one, of negative two, negative three, and so on. And we'll get this error. Maximum calls tax size exceeded. So that's not quite what we want. We want to have a base case where it stops the recursion. And we'll stop at num is equals to zero. And if it is equals to zero, let's return one. That way we'll know factorialize, uh, factorialize zero will return one. Factorialize one will return factorialize zero, which is one times one, which is one. OK. Factorialize two will return two times factorialize one, which we already know is one. Yeah. <laughs> so, and so on and so forth. So, factorialize five should be 120. There we go. Cool. Hope we're all good with this example. <laughs> Leandro is very correct. What about factorial zero? Because even though test passed, if we, yep. <laughs> Don't you apologize, Leandro. You're asking all of the right questions. <laughs> all fine. Awesome. Okay. Let's run our test again. There we go. Pat, pat. So two ways to do that. Aha. Yes. And of course, you will see this pop up. Again, I'm doing this in collaboration with Class Central, who are unaffiliated with Free Code Camp, who are volunteers who put this up in their own free time. If you can, if you want to, if you can afford it, please don't send them money. If you can't, get throw them a couple bucks a month. If not, totally fine. I'm doing this as well in another account. So, ooh, okay, let's find the longest word in a string. Again, couple ways to do this. Um, so we've got a string, the quick brown fox, blah, blah, blah. the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. And our exercise is to find the longest word in that sentence and return the length of that word. So divide this into a couple parts first. We want to, and I'm going to use comments for this, split the string into words. Then loop over words, find the longest. Return longest length. Pseudocode. <laughs> so let's do that first part. Let's split the string into words. Um, and you know what? We'll have a const called words. And we'll just make that an empty array for now. And I want to console log those words just so I know that I'm doing it right. So if I console log the words now, I'm getting an empty array because I declared words to be an empty array. So far, so good. Let's try a couple of ways of doing this. Let's first use regex, everybody's favorite. <laughs> uh, let's call this word regex. Now, we want this to be, we want this to match a series of words, so a word will be made up of one or more alpha, yes, one or more alphanumeric characters. It'll be a global regex because we want to define, we want to match lots of them, and we want it to be case insensitive. So far, so good. Now, how do we do? We need an alt, we need a card for, we need a card for a wild card, pardon me, for any alphanumeric character, which if we remember from doing exercises and uh, if not, we can look it up on MDN, is backslash W. So backslash W says, hey, if this character is an alphanumeric one, great. But we want to match one or more. That's where the 
plus character comes in. Next, we want to extract those matches out of that regex with the string. And we did that, if you remember from the regex portion, with, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, with, with the match uh, function. So that's stir.match, and we want to match the word regex. Now let's see what we got. Check it out. So it's just the word. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. That's one way to do it. I want to just briefly explore another way to do it that doesn't involve regex. You might recognize it from a previous exercise. We're going to use const words. We're going to use split. Now, remember the argument for split is going to be which character to split the string on. And what character would that be? Why, a space. So if we split the string along the spaces, we get the same thing. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Ah, how what I love it that there's multiple solutions to, a, to how to do a thing. So depending on which way you want, there's no wrong answer. Because I like regex, I'm going to go. <laughs> Gunnar says, split is one of my favorites. I agree. Split is great, but I'm going to go with regex. Why not? Just for a bit of chaos. <laughs> but we'll keep that commented there for documentation's purposes. So cool. We've got our words. Now we need to find the longest. Now let's temporarily store a variable for the longest word. Let's call it longest. And we'll set that to be equals to an empty string. Next, we're going to loop. Let's remove this console words. Next, let's loop over that series of strings. For the for loop. And let's use the for of again. I love the for of loop. So let, let word of words. Now, now we need to compare, we need to do an if statement. So check whether current word is longer than the longest. <laughs> longer than the longest word. So let's do an if statement for that. Word.length is bigger than uh, longest.length. So we'll loop over each of them and, and find if word.length is, is longer than the currently longest word's length, then we'll set longest to be equals to word. Oh, how absolutely fine. So let's console log longest. So a quite after we go through the loop, apparently the longest word is jumped, which has six. No, yes. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy dog. Ah, do you know what I'm going to do just for fun? I'm actually through each turn through the loop. I'm going to check what through at each time of the loop, check what the longest one is at the time. So first it's nothing because it's an empty string on the first run through the loop. Then for a good long while, it's quick. You see, quick is just as long as brown. They both have five characters. That's why it doesn't get changed, because remember, if it's bigger than. Not if it's bigger than or equals. Bavin's asking, where did word get defined? We did that here in the loop. See, we're using let word of words. So this is an for of loop. We checked it. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> word of words. It's kind of word of words. <laughs> it's kind of got a, fun, a funny uh, loop to it, uh, a, a ring to it. <laughs> so quick, quick, quick. And then it was jumped. Then it was over the lazy dog. So none of them was longer than longest. Ah. So we're almost done, except we're returning the string length. And our comment here says we want to return longest's length. So let's do that, longest.length. Let's console log that. We're expecting it to be six. Let's just console log just to be on the safe side. It's six. Cool. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Ah, pat, pat. Wonderful. All right. Let's go to the next one. 
Return largest numbers in arrays. So we've got this array here, which is made up of four sub-arrays. This is one, this is the next one, this is the next one, and this is the next one. So far, so good. Return an array consisting of the largest number from each provided subarray. For simplicity, the provided array will ex contain exactly four subarrays. Remember, you can iterate through an array with a simple for loop and access each member with the array syntax ri. So let's have a look at some of these examples because I'm not quite 100% clear. So largest of four with the example we see here should return 27, 5, 39, and 1,001. That's because the biggest one here is 27. Biggest one here is 5. The biggest one here is 39. And the biggest one here is 1,001. OK. First, just some pseudocode first. Uh, declare empty result variable. Then loop through subarrays. No, loop through a R. Loop through R in each subarray. Look for the biggest one. Push biggest to result. Return, whoopsie, return result. Step by step. First, let's declare, we'll use a const because we don't need to change its, va uh, change its definition. Result is equals to an empty array. Then we want to loop through the R. We'll, we'll use a for loop. Let's use, a, uh, let's use an of loop. I love the of loop. For um, let sub R of R. <laughs> sub R of R. Sounds a little piratey again. <laughs> so let's console log those just for fun. Console log sub R. So console log this subarray, we console log this subarray, then this subarray, and then this subarray. Now, we want to go through each subarray and find the largest one in there. So look for the biggest one. Let's declare biggest and loop through sub r. If the current sub r member is bigger than biggest, set biggest to member. And instead of member, we're going to change to number. So it makes a little more sense to me. So we will declare the biggest variable. Let's do that. Now, let's do that first. Let uh, biggest equals to, now what should be an initial value, a good initial value? We could say zero. We are expecting, at least from this example, that all of them will be bigger than zero. But we want to be careful, because nowhere here does it say it, they'll always be bigger than zero. And they could be negative numbers. If we take a look, actually, at some of the tests here, check it out. We're actually using negative numbers. So that's not quite what we want to do. How about? How about instead, let's have biggest start at the beginning of the subarray. So the biggest will be sub r at index 0. Let's console log biggest. So here we can see first one here, very good. The first one here, very good. First one here, and the first one here. So far, so good. Now we want to loop through subarray, uh, subarray. So let's do that. Now let's do for uh, let number of sub r. We're going to do the same thing. If current sub r number is bigger than the biggest, set biggest to number. So if number is bigger than biggest, Biggest is equals to number. Cool. 
Let me move this comment up here, just so I have a good view of what I'm doing. Ooh, Carlos says we could do negative infinity. That's interesting. Something we could try. Let's let me let me finish this first. Lucas Luxen says, um, "Do you know grokking algorithms? For context, grokking algorithms is a book on how to understand or grok algorithms. It's a I can I've read this book. I can recommend it. It's great fun. I'll see if I can find a link. I'm getting some recommendations as well. But let's next thing we need to do." Look for the biggest one. We have it. Push biggest two results. So let's do that. Um, I want to do that inside after the loop. I want to result.push biggest. Now, let's console log result instead. Mm -hmm. See, we can, we can see here where we've got first empty array. Then the biggest one of the first subarray, which is five. Then the biggest one of the second subarray, which is 27. Then the biggest one of the third subarray, which is 39. And since we're doing this at the beginning of the loop, we don't see what happens when, we, when we're when we done. So let's do that. Let's move this console log down here. Five, 27, 39, and 1,001, which is the correct Oh, that's a different example, <laughs> which is almost the correct. I mean, it is the correct result. Let's try it with this negative number one just to be on the safe side. So I'm just going to take this here, copy that, and let's call this with this one involving negative numbers. And I forgot my console log, silly me. 25. 48, 21, and negative 3. So far, so good. But we've got one more thing to do, which is to return result. So there we go. Nothing changes be between our console log and here. So let's see. Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat, pat. Ah, now I want to try. Johannes's. Oh, no. First, Carlos. Infinity, huh? So is that with a capital I? Let's give it a try. Equals negative infinity. Okay. Well, there you go. That's very cool. So we can make it negative infinity. Thank you for the suggestion. Let's try Johannes's one. So, woo. So for each subarray, we want to push math.max and then dot, 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 ri. Let's do that. That sounds, that sounds interesting. Johannes, I would love it if you could please link us to the math.max documentation on MDN. That would be wonderful. So let's try that. Math.max. And we're going to spread, use the spread operator. And instead of using ri, since I've got access to it here, I'm just going to go with sub r. Very short. Let's give it a try. Nice. That's a pat pat for Johannes and a pat pat for Carlos as well. If I didn't before, I'm very sorry. <laughs> Javier asked a question here. The function st stir split includes a regex inside its logic to differentiate a character or symbol from words, does it? I I'm afraid I'm not sure I totally understand your question. I'm sorry. Uh, could you could you maybe word it differently? Do you mean like, are we using regexes in string split? Because we're not. We're looking, we're giving it a string to denote which character or which string to split the string along. Cool. Um, I'd say we're good and done here. Let's Let's run our test one more time. Very cool. Well, thank you all for your help. Pat, pat. Let's keep going. Just gonna have a sip of water. Ah, I'm gonna stay hydrated. Ooh, check if a string, the first argument st stir, ends with the given target string, second argument target. This challenge can be solved with ends with method, which was introduced in ES 2015, which I believe is the same as ES 6. I could be wrong. 
But for the purpose of this challenge, we would like you to use one of the JavaScript substring methods instead. Phew, okay. So for example, we want to confirm, confirm ending bastion and n should return true because bastion ends with n. Congratulation with on should return true. That's because congratulation ends with um, ends with o n. Connor should return false. Connor with n should return false because Connor does not end with the letter n. Oh, and Ida has a suggestion. Ooh, let's try it. Return Esther dot slice negative target dot length is equals to target. Let's all log that. I would love it if you don't mind please explaining that solution to us. It is true, very nice, but we've got negative target target dot length. You know what? I'm going to console log some of these. Console log part negative minus target dot length. So that's giving us negative one. So we're slicing from negative one. Let's try that. Let's return, let's console log stir.slice negative target.length. That gives us n for Bastion. Let's um, try on. Aha! So that gives us a n for the string with the target length. Right. So we're using slice to copy all of the strings from the end backwards for the number of characters given. So given it's, for example, now that the target length is two, we go backwards two. That, that's why it gives us an, but we want to match it with on. And since they're not the same, that gives us false. Very interesting solution. Thank you, Ida. Very, very cool. Let's let's try it with congratulation. That gives us true because string slice negative target length is equals to target, which is O N. Very cool. I like this. This is a nice use of target length. I wonder what happens if I remove the negative. Oh, let's console log that. Let me just go back a little bit. Very cool. Cool solution. Ah, see here we're here we're doing con c o. It's removing the first. It's copying the only the two from two onwards. Now Julia Julia A R says very very correctly. Stir ends with target, which again very correct. Thank you very much. And we can see can be solved like this, but we want to do it with the substring methods instead. Very cool. Let's see what Ida says. Negative operator starts from the last index and it will be the same length when we compare the two. Very cool. Thank you for that. I love how in, I love that y'all are so much better at this than me. <laughs> Let's run our tests. And there we go. Pat pat. Nice one. And pat pat for you, Ida. Thank you very much. All right. Repeat a string, repeat a string. So we've got. Repeat string num times. We've got a string ABC and the number three. We've got a stir and a num. So repeat a given string stir for num times. Second argument, return an empty string if num is not a positive number. For the purpose of this challenge, do not use the built-in repeat method. So for example, if we repeat an asterisk three times, should return the string star, star, star. ABC, three should return ABC, ABC, ABC. I love the positivity. Everyone's like, cool solution, Ida. Well done, Ida. Really cool solution. Oh, Aaron, Ida, Aaron, Pat, Pat. Yeah, wonderful. Ah, nice one, nice one. So let's have, this is how I would do it. Um, let's declare an empty string. And loop a number of num times inside the loop, in the loop, empty result string. In the loop, um, set add 
stir to result. Yeah. Let's do that. Oh, and return ooh, return result. So first we'll declare that empty result string. Let result equals. Oh, marks. And we'll loop a number of n times. So for let i is equals to 0, i is smaller than num, and i plus plus. In the loop, add stir to result. Cool. We can add to a string by going result plus equals stir. Console log that. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Pet pat to all of us. Yeah. Yeah. Well said. So we got ABC, ABC, ABC. Let's try this one time. It's just one ABC. What if we do it zero times? An empty string because we never go into the loop. What about 100 times? I'm just going to take the console's word for it and say that this is 100 ABCs. <laughs> cool. That seems to work. Awesome. So we go, we do n iterations of this loop, num iterations of this loop. And for each iteration, we add the string to the result. Let's run the tests. <gasps> it looks, ah, <gasps> what have I forgotten? I forgot to do my last part. Instead of returning stir, I want to return result. My bad. We're all human. We all make, we all make mistakes. If I had console logged outside, like a good citizen, I would have noticed that. Well, you live and learn. Let's run the tests again. There we go. Pat, Pat, already 44% of the way. How wonderful. What do we got here? Truncate a string. If it's or the first argument, yeah, I see here, stir. If it is longer than the given maximum string length, second argument. Cool. Return the str truncated string with a dot, dot, dot ending. Now, what does truncating mean? It means essentially to cut it off. So, for example, a, a tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket should end. We, we should expect this. Ah, we can see it here. Should return the string a dash tisket and then three dots. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight characters followed by three dots. So that's truncated. It's cut off. And you'll see this sometimes if you're doing some development that you want to perhaps maybe your screen is too small and you want to truncate the string. For example, that's one way to do it. So we're going to use one of our string splitty methods. So um, first, we will cut off the string after num characters. Declare result string first. How silly of me. Cut off string after num characters. Then, um, mm -hmm. cut off the string after num characters. And then we want to add. Oh, no, you know what? I want to be more precise than this. Cut off the string after num characters, setting it to result. There we go. Add uh, dot, dot, dot to result, turn stir. Now, this is kind of right, but there's something in the wording we, want, we don't want to forget. Truncate a string if it is longer than the given maximum string length. So this is only if the string length is bigger than num. So actually what we want is if stir.length is bigger than num, then we'll do this good stuff. And we can use else, or we can just do a return result here. Right? Otherwise, we'll just return string. That sounds good. So let's do that. First, we'll do stir.length. Uh, sorry. <laughs> what am I doing? Let result equals to empty string. First of all, cut off the string after number characters, setting it to result. Now, how could we 
reword that. How about, bear with me here. I'm just going to add a little AKA comment. AKA, copy the first eight, not, sorry, the first et num characters into result. And that we know how to do using slice. So result is equals to stir.slice. We want to copy num characters. Let's console log that. No. No, Ramon, you've done it wrong. <laughs> we want to copy. I've just only given the first argument of slice, which is um, which is uh, from where to start copying. But of course, we want to start ah, uh, Paola Reyes 13. Thank you very much. String equals string dot substring. Ooh, substring. Interesting. Okay, we'll try that. Let me try with slice first, because remember the first argument of slice is where to stop, start copying, and then num will the second parameter will be where to stop copying. So it'll be zero until num, and there we go. A disk. Phew. And oh, Barreya says it very correctly. Plus dot dot dot. So let's do that. Plus dot dot dot. There's our triple dot. Now, the last part we want to do is return result. Now, let's console log our results. Just remove this. Disk it, but, which is what we expect here from the results. However, um, let's see what happens if it's a shorter string. What if it's just dog? Remember, if string length is bigger than num, which in this case, it's not, it won't do this. So instead, it's just going to return the string as this, uh, non-truncated. And um, Catherine very correctly says, you could totally use else. Um, oh, and let's see your solution here. So if string that length is bigger than num, return string substring zero num. Ooh, else if string is less than num, return string. Yep, exactly. But let's check out substring. So you're saying substring. Now let's bring back a tisket, a tasket, a green and yellow basket. So substring also works. I'm going to leave it as homework. Like Paola Reyes very kindly, thank you very much, put up a uh, link here to the substring documentation for MDN. I would ask you to please look it up. And let's find out what that difference is as homework. <laughs> awesome. Um, let's run our tests. And there we go. We are halfway through Pat Pat. I think we've got time for one or two more. As I said, we'll be jumping into our guest session at 55 past. So I will cut the session a little short. If we have any lingering questions, ah, thank you very much. Guest session, you don't really don't need all that JavaScript, I promise. And if there's any lingering questions, we can cover them during an office hours. So, finders keepers. Let's create a function that looks like that looks through an array R and returns the first element that passes a truth test. This means that given an element X, the truth test is passed if we have a, a second variable called func. Which is a fun, <laughs> a fun name, funk. Uh, it's a little dancy. Is true if no element passes the test. Return undefined. So, let's do that. Ooh, people MT says here I've got another solution. Split. Ooh, interesting. I'm not gonna try that now, but totally worth something looking into. Thank you very much. So. What do we want to do here? Um, let's see what we got first. We our first element, our first parameter is an array, and our second argument is a function. Now we haven't we haven't seen a lot of this yet, have we? A function as an argument. Let's console log that that function. Console log func it is indeed a function. Now, as we saw, I think it was last week that we saw we can have a variable be a function, and we can also call it with the brackets. So let's see what this function does, first of all. 
this function returns whether num um, the the parameter num. So it takes a parameter uh, num remainder operator two is equals to zero, which if we remember from the first week of the bootcamp means whether it's uh, even, because if the remainder of dividing it by two is zero, it's even. So let's try it out. Let's try func one. It should give us false. What about zero? True. What about three? False. Four. 596. True. 597. False. So this is a function that we have access to. Very good. So let's read that instruction again. Create a function that looks through the, an array R, which we have, and returns the first element in it that passes the truth test. This means that given an element x, the truth test is passed if func x is true. So this is cool because it allows us to pass in any function. And if the function for that parameter is true, we'll return that member of the array. Let's put this into pseudocode. Loop through R. In the loop, but return tr return uh, array r member or number, let's say, if um, turn r number if func number is true. If no element passes the test, return undefined. We'll get to that in a bit. Let's try it out here first. Let's try out this first. So I'm just gonna, I'm just actually gonna delete this. So let's do a for loop. Do a for of loop. So let num in, uh, not func, r. Number, let number in r. If func number, that's it. Return number. Console log that. So what have we done? In the loop, return r number. So if we return number, r number, if func number is true. So if func number, remember, if it's truthy, if it's true, then we'll return number. Now, let's, let's first call it. Console log. Any guesses what it'll be? Let's see. Mm, folks, I made a mistake. Ah, I, I do this all the time. I said we were going to do a for of loop. Instead, I did a for in loop. My mistake. It should be of. One thing at a time. Um, so now it's giving us two. So let's try console log number and func number. So first did one, which is false. Then we did two, which is true, so it returned two. Let's take a look at what happens. Let me just comment this out. In case you're curious why the in did something else. Uh, look, if we do number in R, it's actually not giving us the members of the array, but the indexes of that array. It's a bit of a quirk. So if you're seeing some mistakes, make sure that your for loop uses of instead of in with an array. Cool. So that looks good. What if they're all, what if I got one, three, three, and four, then it returns four. But what if they're all odd? Undefined. Why is it undefined? It, that just happens to match what we want to do. If no element passes the test, return undefined. Remember that if a function doesn't return anything, if it gets here and it's not returning anything, it'll return undefined for us. And Florin very correctly says, I think for in is better for looping objects. Correct. For of is for arrays. <laughs> now, Gurnur's got a question. Could we use for find. Ooh. Two things. Please, could you post the link to find into the chat in MDN? Let's try it out. R find. Let's see. R dot find funk. Let's try that with two here. 
that doesn't seem to have quite worked. That's because I believe we want to do um, find takes a function as a parameter. Huh. Hmm. <gasps> I have. Oh, return, return. Uh, folks, I'm very sorry, but I'm afraid I'm out of time. Johannes very correctly says five minutes. <gasps> okay. Um, homework for today. I'm very sorry to wrap this up in such a hurry, folks. I got way too caught up having fun. Um, Here's a solution. Let's run our tests. Yes. Pat, pat. Um, oh, return or to find. Of course. Sorry, Gulner. You're absolutely right. I'm very sorry, but I'm going to have to hop out now. We're going into our next session, folks. Um, yeah. So, you really, yeah. So, we're going to hop onto that YouTube link if you're on YouTube. Hop on to just stay here on Twitch. And I'll see you in just a second, everybody. Thank you very much for joining. And remember, we'll do homework is to finish the rest of the basic algorithm scripting uh, to uh, today. Tomorrow, we'll start with object-oriented programming and see you at the guest session. It's going to be great. I hope to see you there. So long, folks. <laughs>